The landscapes of our lives are for learning, where experience is our teacher. When we gather together to share our resources, we are destined to love and thrive. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Maureen. Can you hear the pounding in the background? Because there's guys on the road. Hear it? Okay. No. Good. No. For our listeners, we're not in, you know, Joe Rogan sound booths with microphones. You know, we're just in some basement somewhere. No, 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 that's not true. We have nice places where we are able to zoom and talk to each other and um and do this podcast, which is which is cool. And 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 we said we were just going to do it without all this baldy rods. Just it's just meant to get resources out there. Um and I want to talk about a resource today. Okay. Who do you have? You have somebody I don't know anything about, I think. Oh my gosh. Score one so for Pierre. We've been doing this for a year and a half. I, I get to actually talk about somebody that Maureen has a extensively read, studied, taught, you know, is, the name. Actively, is actively, you know, doing all this stuff. All right. Well, here we go. Maybe yeah, I ironically I never went down the yoga rabbit hole like in the Hindu thing, like I never went that route, but you did. So let's hear it. All right. Good. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And um, today's resource is Swami Vivekananda. I'm not sure how these guys get these names. Um, uh, They're, they're given to them as a result of their, you know, spiritual elevation. And there's a series of things, you know, whether you're a Swami or an honorable person or Paramahansa. Anyway. um, Yeah. Iyengar Iyengar writes about how he got his name in his book. There, there is an explanation for that. Yeah, there is. And I've read it, but I can't repeat it here. So I'll just kind of skip right over that Um, the gentleman is known as Vivekananda and he was the person who brought yoga to the United States first and the story is incredible Um, he from India from India yeah he's born in um, 1863 so what's happening then is the American Civil War And he's um, in a Bengali family, like our yoga teachers in the Yogananda tradition, born um, in Calcutta, Calcutta, excuse me, influential family. Um, He, um, you know, so these people have a name that was given to them by their parents. And then when they become spiritual masters, they're given a different name. Yeah. So as a young boy, he was Naran Drathna, and he was just a very intelligent young man. A little bit of mischief going on. Um, I love it. And he studied um, Western philosophy as well as um, Indian philosophy. And um, his father passed away when he was about 21 years old. And the reason I mention that is often when dads pass away, when young men are younger, um, it, it has some sort of effect. And these young men, particularly in, you know, adolescence or something like that, they just take on the mantle of being the dad, of of maturing faster and grounding themselves faster. And, you know, maybe that's what happened here a little bit. Um, he uh, went on to have this spiritual discipline and, and he found out that there was something taking place in Chicago in 1893. So he's, you know, in his 30s or something like that. Um, and it was called the World's Parliament of Religions. And dude decides to go there from India and he has no money. He's just sitting around um, in this spiritual kind of situation um, at some center. And um, he shows up uh, on September 11th. This is his opening line because we do read from his books. I thought he would have been invited. You know, when we were talking about this before, like the parliament, you would think there would be an invitation extended and these world 
influencers would come to the, and be oh my gosh. right that's what i you're think you're so beautiful you're so beautiful maureen you know lands uh, landscapes for learning and learning conversation and being curious and thinking about the moment and everything yeah like it's called the world's part of minimum illusions just like just like our baseball is called the world series do we invite the japanese over no Oh, it's the World Series, you know. So they're having their own little parliament, world's parliament of religions. Continent of India, ah, no problem. Let's just ignore this. Okay. But remember, too, it's 1893. Um, you know, religion and lots of different things. It is an age of enlightenment where there people are kind of trying to open up their minds. This is something of the West, then. It wasn't extended to the East. I think that would be accurate. Okay. Right. I think there was no Shinto, um, you know, Japanese priests or anything like that in evidence. I don't know that for a fact, but this guy hears about it and he decides to go to America, which is just incredible. Anyway, he arrives, he does give a talk, which he wasn't on the agenda. Nobody knew he was coming, but somebody said, oh, we got to listen to this guy. These are his first words. Sisters and brothers of America. And that's pretty radical. I mean, um, and um, he talked for like an insanely long period of time, hours. And he, exp you know, he was just expansive on um, combining what he knew through Vedantic um, ancient Indian wisdom uh, and, and American philosophy. Um, so he was the first ambassador. Is he, he trying to make it accessible by making that parallel or comparison or integration with what he knew to be American philosophies or values? Like, is is that what he was? What was his was was that what his purpose was? Do you know? Yeah, he's been called messenger of Indian wisdom to the Western world, and he was the first messenger. Presenting it in a way that the Westerners would understand or be or receptive to it. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to and know your audience, right? Like he had to know his audience. Yeah. He spent three and a half years in um, basically New England, um, the eastern coast of the United States, um, also London. Um, and he he founded the Vedanta Society in New York in 1894. And this is the first, you know, this is like the landing of the pilgrims you know, on Plymouth Rock. Um, and this is where all our yogic and Indian connection comes from. Yogananda comes later, I think in the 30s or something. And and specifically as a follow-on to this, you know, this first, you know, I, I can't call it a missionary kind of thing, but it was just like the first messenger, as it says here. Um, he taught specific... Um, teachings that came from Ramakrishna. These are all names that if you go down this rabbit hole are, you know, Illuminati and, um, and um, he wanted people to realize the dignity of their person, in fact, their soul, um, through selflessness, worship of God, and mental discipline. And um, and this we, he's got a book uh, Bhakti Yoga, um, which is which is the path to realization through love. Um, there's a couple of things that were really notable to me, and I'm sorry for just keep droning on here, but um, he he talks about atoms and how the world is made up of particles and how everything is one and it's really energy mm -hmm. the dude died his death is also somewhat miraculous like yokananda's um he was sort of done and um 1902 so he's not that old not that old 40? he was sort of who was sort of, he went, he returned to India. He was welcomed. Um, he returned in 1897. Um, I think he came here in 1893. So that's only like a four year span. 
Mm-hmm. And, and um, five years later, he passed. He was done. Wow. Mahasamadhi. Yeah. Which for our listeners is an elevated spiritual experience where you just let your soul um, release from the body and you're you're done. You mm. die. It's interesting the word soul. I I told you I was listening to um Tucker Carlson interviewing Elon Musk. <laughs> and no, I love our podcast. We go from Vivek and on artificial intelligence. Yeah. And Elon Musk was joking that somebody somebody had called him a specious because he wants to protect humanity, like from the power of AI or whatever. And um, uh-huh. and he's like, I don't, I don't. Okay, yeah, call me specious because, like, yeah, <laughs> I want to protect the human species and all the other life that's on the planet. Um, so that's fine, call me that. But they got into this discussion about consciousness, and right. you know, and this idea of a soul. Uh, you know, do you think AI has a soul and that kind of thing? Anyways, just remind that word soul. And I think psychiatry means doctor of the soul. Really? Yeah. That really? I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong. It's but cool. yeah, that word soul is not to me, it smacks of things like you're talking about, like old, like hundred years ago and you know, you don't hear a lot of people talk, except for pilots, you know, how many souls were on board. Mm. It just mm. reminds me of, you know, the ephemeral and, and consciousness that's pure, separate from the body that can live on, you know, maybe. That's that's kind of why, you know, when we started this podcast, it was about the mind-body connection. Mm-hmm. And then we added spirit um, because we wanted to recognize that there is something else. And I don't know that we can, you know, prove that to anybody or um, define it, but there's, there's something else. And uh, I'm going to wrap this up because Vivekananda, there's not a lot on him. He did write numerous books. I'm looking at, um, Ooh, six or seven or eight or nine they're all very short um you know they're written in the 1800s by a yogi dude so it's not it's not like descartes writing philosophy um yeah but um the more i the more i review some of this stuff and see these connections that we're making um this this whole way the universe is put together is very interesting mm. and i think our view of the universe is is changing at a very fundamental level um and i'm going to go back to i think it's only the might be the 1700s but i think it might be the 1800s middle 1800s, Thomas Burnett writes this book called The Mundane Egg. And he's trying to square religion with philosophy, um, with um, social science and and evolutionary stuff. And religion had all these ideas about when the world, you know, um, started, and they had so many years since the flood, and they, they had all these, these ideas. And and so Thomas Burnett writes this fantastic book, and nobody's ever read this. And it's just it's just so sick. He says that, yeah, that that actually the earth is this egg, and there's this birthing process. He's trying to square God with like geology. It's the most messed up, like trying to get a square peg into a round hole and he's pounding it on this it through this book it's the dumbest thing in the whole world i think i think i remember it that way um and so what i guess i'm saying is here's a guy who's trying to describe the world as like an egg and um 
and we're only a few hundred years from that and we're we're starting to see the world as essentially nothing <laughs> energy particles uh, not particles energy packets and space and walls aren't walls bodies aren't bodies it, the whole thing is just getting out of out there amazing so that's where spirit lives maybe who the who the freak knows imagine amazing how we've evolved as a species mm -hmm. um in this prefrontal cortex and our human brains and just you know i think elon Musk said like we are different because we we are conscious you know we have consciousness so that does distinguish us from other species so like fine but it's we it's, have an elevated he, believe, we have a, he believes that there he's like i'd like to think that there is he's like i don't know if there's other consciousness in the universe like i don't know like it would be cool if there was but like as that's a really smart know, guy who are, says i don't know we are the only we are the only ones that we know of anyway at this point so anyways yeah. we got we we rambled off there but no the samadhi yeah. thing and him viva kananda you know that that uh that indian belief of you know what is it mahasamadhi or right you know the the end of life but consciousness you know if we're talking about consciousness and the soul you know is that something that dies like what is that and you know mm -hmm. obviously the body passes and so yeah this is the intersection of the mind body and then spiritual theological realm i suppose yeah yeah, yeah. interesting well thank All you right. yeah. thank you for that opportunity who are you? Maureen, Landscapes for Learning, Learn to Live, Live to Learn. Boom, you got that right. And I'm Pierre from Yoga Heels Everywhere. Thanks, friends. Peace through grace. Mm -hmm.